Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the Beyond the Bitcoin Show. Today is December the 27th, 2020. 20 strong hand long-term thinking personal responsibility is the new counterculture only the beginning unconfiscatable bitcoin is the next bitcoin do not accept a new normal i'm offended by selling golden age defer gratification conviction we'll be talking about all of that tonight it is late at night if you have questions i have answers you can type in bitcoin meister I'll see it. It'll turn colors or you can do a super chat that turns colors also. And it gets my attention. Five digit realm, baby. I'm, I know you're loving it. We'll talk a little bit about Bitcoin. It's been an exciting and <laughs> every weekend's exciting uh, with Bitcoin. Uh, check out yesterday's show. I talked about Bitcoin hitting a, uh, it was about to hit a half a trillion dollar market cap. And it was a beautiful show this week in Bitcoin. The Bitcoin rabbi was on along with Gigi and Brecky. That was on the 25th when some of you were out uh, lighting trees and stuff. Uh, I, was, I was here working hard uh, with uh, the rabbi and, and Brecky and Gigi. All right. So check that out. They are all linked to below. One of you, uh, everyone, well, lots of you know that I like to take cold showers. I... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know where I originally got the idea from somewhere on the internet, but Wim Hof really reinforced the idea. So it started to become uh, a, a more serious habit uh, through uh, watching some Wim Hof stuff. Uh, and because of that, someone mentioned to me that Jordan Peterson and his daughter interviewed Wim Hof recently. Well, it wasn't recently, but it just it, it debuted recently, this video. So I watched it, and it's going to be linked to below. And I was impressed uh, with Wim Hof and uh, Jordan Peterson, who was ill at the time, uh, was just seeking help. You know, how how can I get rid of my uh, he had a physical illness, mental illness? I mean, all, all sorts of bad things going on in his head. And Wim Hof was so exuberant and is such a unique beast. And I really can't describe the entire video or just Wim Hof's aura, but he loves the cold. And he gives examples where his brain has been studied, his body has been studied. And because of him forcing himself into discomfort, he has able, he's been able to get in, connect his mind and body in a way that hardly anyone can. Like he, he, it's, it's mind over matter. He won't get sick. He won't feel the cold. I, I would assume if he, he was feeling sick, he could defeat it just with his mind. And he, he talks about being like with his brain in control of like different organs and stuff. It, it, it's amazing. And uh, he, one thing that, that came out of it was, discomfort, uh, that discomfort becomes power, okay? Seek discomfort. The discomfort becomes power. Power over your own body uh, and just a, a mental clarity and a, a mental health and, and a physical health. So I take a cold shower and, and he says, you only need to be in the cold shower for two and a half minutes. I, I Mine is much longer than that. Mine is at least five minutes, it seems like. Um, so I take every day that I eat, which isn't every day, right? Every day that I eat, I take a cold shower. I, I try to take it right before I eat, in fact. And one thing I'll, I'll warn all of you about is that, uh, I mean, I yell when I'm in the cold shower. I mean, when you get in there, you get that initial blast, it wakes you up, it, it just, you feel so alive. And indeed, um, I mean, Wim Hof talks about how because of all the comfort that we live in, we, we just, we become sick, uh, we, we're not in touch with our bodies. Our skin is all covered up. It's not exposed to what it's supposed to be exposed to. We're, and I think he, he doesn't talk about fasting, but fasting kind of hits on the same thing that cold showers do. It, it's this discomfort. It's this 
challenge to the systems in your body, working certain systems in your body that ne you never work in this era of comfort and abundance. And I mean, you feel uh, you feel really alive uh, to a point where you're screaming. I mean, <laughs> so, so do be careful about that. If you, you have neighbors, uh, it depends on what Airbnb I'm in, how loud I, I, I let myself get. Um, but I, I mean, I, afterwards, I am on fire, but I'm cold and uh, and I'm ready to eat. And I got a lot. You know, if I was tired beforehand, you're, you're not tired then. It definitely wakes you up. So he says you can do it in the morning. He says to try it to do it on an empty stomach. So I do do it when my stomach is uh, th the most empty. So uh, he really super believes, and this is what keeps a person healthy. He also talks about his breathing techniques. And Jordan Peterson was very interested. Jordan Peterson treated him with much respect, much respect. Was, I mean, Jordan P Peterson is this highly intelligent, intellectual. He could laugh someone like uh, Wim Hof off, and he didn't. He did not at all. He, he gave him the utmost respect and, and wanted to do the breathing exercises. And the breathing exercises also fit into this, like, challenging, putting yourself into discomfort because you become a little lightheaded. And, uh, and Wim Hof explains how that, that raises the body pH to a point where your body thinks it's dying or something, and, and thus you don't die, and then you just become stronger. So again, seek, seek discomfort. Discomfort becomes power. And now, now again, don't, don't do insane extreme things of, of discomfort. I mean, fasting and cold showers, I think that's good. And, and, and the breathing techniques. Don't do the breathing techniques when you're like um, in, in the pool, though, because you can pass out and die. And people have done that before. So uh, it, don't, don't come combine the cold showers and the breathing techniques at the same time you you probably could die um just from passing out god forbid and just drowning in the in the shower so uh what else uh yeah and, and just being i i like the ability to to or to think you have the ability at least to heal yourself or just to I mean, you can mentally heal, heal yourself, definitely. I, I, I get a lot of mental clarity out of the uh, cold showers and the fasting. And I, I mean, I feel I feel darn good. I feel darn good. And uh, every year it feels like I'm feeling better. And every year, it, most people feel like they're getting worse because they're getting older. I mean, we're all getting older. You, you can't. Uh, so this, this stuff keeps you younger, I think. And uh, yeah, go, go try it out, the cold shower. Watch the video. I will link to it below. It's not, if you're watching this tape, you, you will see it. Now, pound that like button, everyone. Check out Saturday's show. I just put it in the, uh, the uh, live chat if you're watching this live. Uh, and Ritwik Nandupumar says, what percentage of your uh, portfolio is cash and how much is Bitcoin? Uh, it's, uh, God, 99% yeah, yeah, Bitcoin or something. <laughs> yeah. Let me think. I, I know the numbers uh, off the top of my head now. Um, yeah, it's like 99% Bitcoin. I'd say 1% 1, 1 cash or something like that. Yeah, because I, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it, it's probably less than probably less than 1% cash. Less than 1% cash. Uh, all right. So good, good question. And uh, Roman Q says, huge fan of Wim Hof in the water uh, in the winter. I now shovel the driveway and go for walks in my flip-flops in the snow. Pushing your comfortability limits is liberating. Yeah, also, don't turn on the heat when you're about to go to sleep. Let it be. Go to sleep when it's good. I mean, you, if you're warm, if you're cold, you'll, you'll get in the covers a little bit more, okay? Yeah, don't, so many people have to have the heat. Blast. I mean, I have a sibling. <laughs> Has to blast the freaking heat in the house. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's amazing. I mean, in my sibling's house, I got to respect my sibling, but I mean, it gets really hot in there. Uh, and uh, what's, I, I, with all the Airbnbs I go to, I keep it pretty darn cold. And uh, All right. So let us uh, continue with the show. And let's uh, – you, you pounded that like button. I know. Thank you, guys. Uh, but 2021 is like <laughs> – it's on Monday. It's on Friday. It's kind of surreal. It's been a great year for those of us who are in motion. And there are a lot of 80 percenters out there that just think because it's going to turn 2021 – that it's magically uh, their lives are going to get better. Like this is going to cure all their mental illness and their hypochondria. Okay. And it won't, it won't. 
I mean, there's, it, there's really no difference between Friday and Saturday uh, unless you change, unless you put yourself in motion. If you keep yourself in that same loser compliant attitude, and, and then you're going to be in a doom hole of helplessness like you were in 2020. There will be no different difference that there are a lot of people that are just blindly saying, oh, 2021 is going to be so great. Well, I, I'll tell you what, if you worship the media and, and uh, just listen to what the leaders tell you, uh, I don't think they're changing their tune. Um, and so it, it, if you don't change yourself, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. I think there are going to be a lot of people that are, are going to be defiant this year, but it's because they're changing. And I, I think 2021 will be different for, for a lot of people. But for most people, I think it'll be exactly the same. They, they're going to be very disappointed with 2021. They're not going to become, they're not magically going to become wealthier or healthier. You have to make the changes. You have to be in motion. Get in the Bitcoin, get in the Wim Hof, get in the whatever. Just be in motion. Just don't sit in your house in quote unquote quarantine. If you're in quote unquote quarantine now and you plan to stay that way until they tell you to get out of it, you're going to still be in it in 2022, you loser. Pound that like button. So speaking about losers, Andrew Yang is running for, uh, is running for mayor of, of New York City. So you might remember him. He ran for president. And, and compared to the communist that runs New York City now, it's like the only place he's going to appear to not be a radical. <laughs> One of the few places in the United States. But I, I, I've been very disappointed with Andrew Yang. I, I, I thought when he initially came out, you know, he was not a politician. He he was going to bring some change to the Democratic Party, kind of have this tech edge to it. But he's a micromanager, and, and we, I, we knew that part beforehand, but he, he ended up stumping for Joe Biden. And, 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 I mean, he's into the woke thing, the identity politics, politics the victim glorification. Uh, and I will say that Blake Anderson, who's a Bitcoin guy who's been on the show and on Thomas' show quite a few times, but all you old schoolers know Blake Anderson, a genius – Blake Anderson was uh, one of the first people. He was just like, oh, I, I, he can't stand. He couldn't stand Andrew Yang from the beginning. And uh, yeah, Blake Anderson was right. I was not correct. <laughs> I, I thought he was, you know, he's just a politician. So now, you know, he he's he, he did his thing for the Democratic Party. Um, he got popular and now he's going to run for mayor in New York. So and just, you know, s- stick with his uh, paddock prison industrial complex type of thing. And he, he wants the philosopher king's to plan out everything for the quote unquote little people. And everybody's a, a little person. He's got to take care of everybody. He's a philosopher king. Uh, and yeah, he's definitely part of the panic prison industrial co- complex that we get to see every day. If you dare uh, type in CNN.com or, you know, watch ABC, it's a waste of your time, of course. Uh, but anyway, just uh, just want to give you that news story. Andrew Yang is out. out. I, I think there's a lot of you who watch this show who probably are, are have uh, don't think as highly as you you once did of of, of Mr. Gang. Uh, anyway, so yeah, let's. I talk about this quarantine thing again. Uh, there, there are these people who love the virtual signal on, on Twitter that says I'm in I'm in quarantine and uh, I had to uh, I was unable to uh, I, I I sacrificed because instead of ordering from uh, the high quality food store, I'm only ordering from Audi. Oh my God. I mean, God, these people, <laughs> why, are, why can't you just walk outside and go to the freaking supermarket? No, you got to be in quarantine because the big boss man told you to be in quarantine. Quarantine is a state of mind, dudes. Healthy people are not in quarantine. No healthy poor person is being forced in their houses or should be forced in their houses. If you are healthy, you should be able to go anywhere you want. Quarantine is for sick people. Now, most of these people are hypochondriacs. They become sick in the mind. So I guess, yeah, it makes sense. If you're sick in the mind, you're mentally ill now, uh, yeah, lock yourselves in your house and order from Audi, okay, and think that you're, you're, you're doing something great for the world, that you're saving someone. But you're not. You're not. You're not. You're not making any difference at all. You're just a loser in your house paying too much money for groceries that you could actually uh, get for free in the dumpster of Audi. Uh, I've done that before. Pound that like button. Now, and we're going to talk about dumpster diving uh, toward the middle of the show. Uh, what, what else do we have here? Yeah, that, just talking. <laughs> quarantine people saying they're trapped in their houses. How how bad quarantine's been for them? What, what are you talking? You forced yourself. This, this is insane. You're pretending to be trapped, and uh, you want attention for it. It's a state of mind. So healthy people, you're not quarantined. And uh, 
but unhealthy people, yeah, you'll, you'll still be in quarantine until uh, – it, you're like one of those Japanese soldiers in World War II. You're so loyal to the state that you won't, you won't give up your loyalty until they come and tell you to stop. There were Japanese soldiers who were on like South Pacific islands still ready to kill people until like the 1950s. I think the longest one lasted until the 1970s or something like that. You look it up. It, it, it's insane how loyal they were to the state, to the, the, the Japanese emperor. Uh, and, 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 okay, they were fighting a war, so maybe you can see life or death. These people, they're so loyal to CNN and the, the uh, panic prison industrial complex. I mean, they will not stop until, you know, everyone's been vaccinated or, you know, they, they will follow the party line. Oh, even if you've been vaccinated, even if you're sick, you should get, even if you already had the disease and we're fine, you should get vaccinated. You should still wear the mask. You should still lock yourself in your house until we tell you to not to in 2022, until Bill Gates tells you not to. Yeah. All right. Now, and, and, and again, I don't make up conspiracy theories about Bill Gates. It's sickening that he talks about, though, he, he thinks it's uh, it'd be perfectly normal if uh Things stay insane until 2022. He likes that. He thinks that's fine. Uh, he's so Ben Shapiro, my main man. He wonders out loud, how did this become political? How did the virus become politicized? Why is it just about saving lives? He he he, he actually wonders this, and I mean, I know why. I know why. Because it's not that serious. It's not that serious. If it was that serious, yeah, people would be like, if it was freaking Ebola, like that you could catch really easily, it, it, it wouldn't be politicized at all. Left and right, everyone would be like, we got to fix, we got to do whatever we got to do right now to fix this thing so we don't start vomiting up blood and, and just all die. I mean, it, that, that, that's how this has become politicized. Because it's not serious. It isn't that serious. It's not that much dangerous than what we encounter every winter. But it's so hyped. And even Ben Shapiro believes the non some of the nonsense that's out there. He doesn't look into it. Is it really airborne? Is it the, oh, the only virus in the history of mankind that is spread from people who have no symptoms uh, in the air? There's, nothing, there's never been a virus like that where you have no symptoms at all. And uh, it's... And, you breathe and other people can get it from you. I, I personally, I, I have seen no proof that even sick people can spread it through the air. I, I, there's plenty of proof that like most viruses, that if it's fecal oral, you 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 defecate you and, and the defecation somehow gets on your hands or whatever and you touch something and it's easily, yeah, it's easily transmittable that way. You go into a bathroom and someone didn't, someone touched the door, you touch the door, yeah, it's easily transmissible. Trust me, I mean, yeah, like, it's not that much different in its, how transferable it is, uh, like most viruses that are out there. Ben Shapiro doesn't question that. He doesn't quite, I mean, he, so he, he's a little scared, probably still a little scared, but he's better than most people about this situation. But I'm just telling you, that's how it's become, that's why it's politicized. It's just a, it's just something for power. They know, they know it's not that serious. They go to fancy restaurants. Gavin Newsom going to fancy restaurants. He knows it's a joke. He knows the whole thing. He's not scared of getting it. They're not they're, now again. Some of the fat ones are scared of getting, and uh, but but most diseases affect fat people. Uh, I mean, this has been a learning experience for some of the fat politicians. I mean, they were beforehand. They they thought, oh, you know, I'm fat. I, 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 I'll get the flu. I, I, no, if, if fat people get the flu, they can get seriously ill too. And we'll talk about that in a, in a second. So yeah, Ben Shapiro wondering how it became politicized. I just told you how it became politicized because it is just it's just politics. It's not that serious. Uh, compare. I mean, it might be a little bit more serious than the flu. Probably, probably a little bit more serious than the flu for children. It's less serious, and yet all these grown-ups um, are, are, are as scared as anything about their children. I mean, it, it's so nonsense. Attack vector, attack vectors. Children, their houses, oh, it's the school, the 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 the, uh, the schools they're paying for. The, the now and now they have to uh, you know especially clean their houses. Their attack vectors. And what? How easily it is. For these people, to, these people getting paid two hundred thousand dollars a year to be poor, but they're wasting so much money and following the rules, uh, the, the mainstream rules, the mainstream narratives, the uh, in the panic prison industrial complex. You, you will become poor, even if you make three hundred a year. You'll become a. Uh, you'll be struggling. Well, if you're if you're the man of the family and you give in to your wife and your kids and everything, and you're not too much of a man if 
if you do that. But that's how most men in America are today that like make 200, 300,000 a year. They do whatever Buffy tells, tells them to do and, you know, get, gets the biggest house possible, private schools. Uh, and, and then uh, it continues to pay for the private school, $50,000 a year when the kid, uh, the private school is so scared to even have children in person there. Or the wife won't let him send them to the school. So they, they sit in front of the Zoom and he pays 50000 a year for it. All right, pound that like button. Now, uh, so Israel, let's talk about Israel real quick. Did you hear Israel's having an election in March? No, you, you probably haven't heard that. Now, the media isn't talking about it. Now, it, it just, you know, in the past, a lot of you, you know all about Net, Netanyahu and the elections and every little thing that goes on in Israel. Uh, you, you, you've you known about in the past. And for some of you, it's very annoying. Some of you are very angered by it that you see it in the news um, for, for various reasons. Um, but recently, uh, you know, th this is big news. There's going to be another election. For Israel, it's big news. And for people who are worldly people, travelers, it's big news. I don't think it is big news for most of America at all. But usually most of America hears about it. So why isn't most of America hearing about it anymore? Well, because the mainstream media that likes to portray Israel as this big, bad, successful uh, country that, uh, that that hurts the little victims, you know, they, they love to talk about this victim stuff, the victim narrative, all, all this nonsense, because everybody, everybody loves a victim and people, no one likes success. I mean, here in Bitcoin Overlay, we love success, okay, but most people are not in motion. They like to live through victims and victim glorification, and the media loves to do that, but the media has been obsessed with the virus and the media has been obsessed with Trump and, and the media has been obsessed with the or in the summer that the, the the racial strife and everything. So there's been no time for Israel. The other part of it is that the person we love to hate, President Trump, has made big news. Uh, in, if you consider the Middle East important, which a lot of people did because it was always thrown in everybody's faces and it shouldn't be important to you. Who cares what goes on there? I mean, we, we produce our own oil now in the United States of America, okay? So really, who cares what goes on in Israel, Saudi Arabia, whatever? Unless, you know, you, you, you like Israel, you do business over there, and you love to travel, and it's a beautiful country, it's free, and you want to know if there's any, like, strife going on there, okay? Yeah, but, but really, it's, what's going on in Israel is no, no, to you as an American. It's not that much different than what's going on in Uruguay. It shouldn't make that much of a difference to you, um, and, unless, again, you have connections or whatever. So another reason the media isn't talking about it is because Trump— has been more successful than any president making peace treaties with Israel and its Arab neighbors. It's been four countries, um, United Arab Emirates, uh, Morocco, ba Bahrain, and uh, Sudan. And uh, so that's another reason not that, that, that they haven't heard about it and they, weren't, they won't talk about it. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Just, I just, I'm pointing this out because the, me the media just controls what people know about. They control the narrative so much for most people, you could find out all this information, like I do. I find out about that this information. I found about the elections through the internet. I'm interested in Israel. I, I'd love to go to Israel. I wish I could go there now, but they are insane about the virus, and they are uh, they're vaccinating people at a, a, a faster rate than any country or something. Oh God, um, good luck to them. Um, I mean, you would think, of all countries, it, the Israelis would question a human experimentation. Like, I mean, because it is it is an exercise in uh, human experimentation, taking a vaccine that's completely unproven. I mean, and people can opt into that if they want to. I, and we're going to talk about the free market aspect, what a free market vaccine would be like soon in this show. So there you go. Uh, you used to hear about Israel a lot because uh, the media had a little, they want, it was something that was interesting. It, it got people emotional. But they, they, they have, they have other, other, another three things to focus on now. Uh, so a superpower, a quote unquote superpower for 20 percenters that you should flex is your ability to pay attention to like more than two or three, uh, current events at a time and to be able to figure out what current events are actually important to you as an individual. Most people, they can't two, two news stories. That's all. That's all they can handle. So what are the two news stories that most people have been handling these days? Uh, virus and the election. And then dur during the summer, there was a time they forgot about the virus and it was the election and the riots. Uh, but yeah, m most people, uh, th that's all. That's all That's all they get out of current events. And, and then they become obsessed with those two or three. And, and that's it. The, nothing else matters. They don't try to see the connections between uh, 
them being obsessed with these things and, and being total losers and not in motion. Uh, all right. So a story that's not getting, you, you think it would get more covers is this Nashville thing. Um, it, it does appear the guy was a lone wolf. Um, I, I, I don't know if he was really targeting the infrastructure uh, of, uh, uh, communication infrastructure. And he might've just been targeting it because he was insane and thought that people were getting 5g poisoning. <laughs> Um, so I really don't have much to add about it. I, I don't think, I think in the long run, it's, it's just a little blip in the radar and it, it's not, it's not a, a bunch of people who are all of a sudden going to try to get back at social media, uh, through some, uh, guerrilla tactics. And I don't think it was even that. I think it was just, he may have been insane and, uh, was, and had a conspiracy about five G's and, and five G and didn't want to live anymore. And, he destroyed some uh, property, which is unfortunate for the people who own the property because destruction of property is, is uncalled for that ruins people's lives. All right. So I've really, I've nothing much more to say about that. There are a lot of conspiracies. It's a bunch of noise out there. Yeah. I, I think, I think they'll get to the bottom of this uh, uh, pretty soon. Uh, so I, I'm not going out of my way to really learn anymore. Now, uh, as news comes in, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'll hear from different sources and I, I will see. Um, let me, oh, we got more questions here. Uh, yeah, so Ritwik Nandu Kumar says, and I'm sorry, Ritwik Nanda Kumar says, do you intend to pass your BTC on um, to future Meister generations? Say your, uh, say your granddaughter. Well, I'm not, I don't have any kids or anything like that, uh, but my siblings have kids, and yes, yes, I do. Uh, my I most likelihood during my lifetime. I want my uh, my nieces and nephews to um, be 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 wealthy as uh, uh, just to be to be millionaires themselves um, because of me just as like eighteen year olds and stuff. My it, the funny thing is is my siblings do not know um, have no idea about the, how this has changed my life uh, financially. They they know I'm into it. They don't know like a lot of you have been able to figure out, you know, that I'm doing pretty well. Um, they don't, they don't know that. So it'll be pretty awesome when I tell my uh, siblings, uh, I say, surprise, guess what? I'm, uh, <laughs> and, um, but my mother knows and uh, my father took it to his grave. He knew and my grandmother knew, but she also died uh, this year. So two people took it to their graves. Uh, <laughs> so my mom, uh, my mom knows my siblings don't know, but yes, uh, I definitely, uh, uh, someone said my hair is looking good. Thank you. I, I washed it with, um, and we're going to, so, and thank you for the question, by the way. And uh, I washed it with coconut water from a coconut and baking soda. So in a cold shower. And I always wash my hair with cold, wa cold water. Always, always. That's good for your hair. But yeah, the coconut water, it wasn't coconut oil. Oil is, it's, it's healthy for you. It's good to consume uh, coconut oil. But it, it does leave your hair greasy. I tried it once. It's not for everyone. Not for everyone. I think it would help your scalp. And I would say um, if you're a guy under 30 and you're losing your hair, maybe um, a coconut oil probably will not hurt. Um, but, again, that's if you value your, your wealth in women. Um, that's why guys care about their hair when they're under 30, uh, because they, they think if they lose it, the women aren't going to like them. And that is not a hundred percent true at all. Um, there are some women that there's, there's some women that don't like me because I got a big crooked nose. Okay. They're just, just different women have different tastes. And some women love me because I, because I, I look like Perry Farrell. And I mean, uh, but there's some women that love bald men and there's some women that will only go with a guy with a great hair, but there's, there's plenty out there, dude. You don't, I, and I know people, this is a, a difficult topic to, to, bring up on the show people attack me because they're like adam you you had you, you know you have good hair and everything and uh so you don't understand and yeah i don't fully understand what it is means to to, to lose your hair before you're 30 no i don't but i'm just saying i'm trying to keep you in motion dudes i'm trying to keep you in motion um all right and again and people also do not like when i talk about the um uh, propecia and i i say that it um can uh, make your make you think you're a uh, that you that what, what are you uh, that, 
well, anyway, it, it can mess with your testosterone levels in, in a bad way. And uh, that's part of the reason you stop losing your hair. Uh, but OK, we won't get into that. That, that. That's for another show. And it's, it's too controversial. It's, it's been brought up before. You guys do what you want to do to your to your own bodies. Um, OK, so moving on. What do we have here? Neil Ferguson. Uh, and it is amazing that a superpower today is just like being able to multitask and and like know about more than three stories and pay attention to more than three aspects of your life. <laughs> it's, it, that, I mean, most people, most people are just focused on nonsense and, and terrible attention spans and uh, impulsivity that's out there. So Neil Ferguson, the guy in Britain that scared a lot of people, I talked about this yesterday. I'm going to bring it up again. Neil Ferguson has given an extraordinary interview to inter, to the times in which he emphasized how the Chinese example changed the boundaries of what governments can get away with in the West. So yeah, he likes that uh, the Chinese lockdown model, they, they pushed it to an extreme that a lot of people didn't think they'd be able to push it to extreme. And uh, then other governments did what they did. It became a, a new normal to just lock down your citizens in a, an authoritarian type of way like the Chinese that they have exported their way of disgusting uh, authoritarian government to the Western world. And Neil likes it. A lot of people like it. We don't like it. I don't like it. I don't accept it. I am defiant against it. And uh, I and I encourage everyone else to continue to speak up against it. And uh, all right, what's it, what's it called when you're when you're both sexes? That, that That's the word I couldn't think of. Um, uh, when, when your body thinks you're uh, uh, my God, what is the darn term, man? All right. Moving on. I, I, and late at night at uh, one in the morning, I, I forget words sometimes. <laughs> I need to take a cold shower now, right? It, it'll come back to me. Uh, all right. Uh, ideas matter. Ideas matter. That's something that uh, Yaron Brooks says a lot. And I agree. For an individual, ideas might matter. But sadly, most people are not individuals. They're not into developing anything close to uh, deep ideas or using their brains at all or, or being philosophical at all. So um, I don't – Yaron Brook kind of preaches this uh, message that we got to just keep on spreading the word of ideas and it, people will wake up and they'll want to think. Eh, I don't, most people don't want to think, dude. <laughs> but I, I think uh, Yaron Brook's uh, way of thinking, Ayn Rand's way of thinking, just – the stressing the importance of the individual over the collective and not sacrificing for a collective, just doing what doing what's best for you as an individual. I, I think that can catch on. I think that can catch on, but not for the majority of people. Most people are naturally uh, pathologically altruistic and they are going to do the worst for themselves in, uh, in, in order to fit in to virtue signal and say, look, I sacrificed for someone's grandma. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, the, the, the defendant people out there, they desire a government to take care of them uh, through money printing and restrictions. And the, these, the money printing and the restrictions that the dependent people are screaming for are what's making the wealthier people they are envious of wealthier. OK, printing the money and the restrictions is is pumping the price of Bitcoin. OK, it's making me wealthier, making me who speaks out against everything they believe in. It, they they that's why they're 80 percenters. That's why they will never become anything, because the policies they promote, the policies they think are helping them, they're hurting them. And they're they're only helping the in the in motion people, the people that have figured out ways around the government interference that they are. Uh, they are encouraging. So one theory on why Bitcoin is surging in the United States uh, is, is the uh, is the government policy, the money printing, the checks, the government shutdowns, all the things that the virtue signalers are cheering on because they think it helps them. Purely emotional look at things on their part. They don't realize that no matter what, it makes those it makes those with assets richer. Okay, how much richer for Bitcoin holders? Um, because of this whole debacle, all right? How much richer are we? Uh, 
they'll never know. The 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 eighty percenters, they'll still be in their doom hole waiting for the government to check. Uh, yeah. So as I said, that them not being productive and encouraging the money printing is just making us wealthier. Pound that like button now. I will say here, Fox News has an article about a New York City sheriff arresting uh, maskless re revelers at an elite an illegal nightclub in Queens. I say party on, dudes. Party on in Queens. And Amazon did not shut down. Did you, did you guys notice that Amazon never shut down? Uh, so you don't have to shut down. They, they didn't go hide. Uh, but – and – People blame them. People, bl but why did? Why is Amazon rich and I'm poor? You're blaming them for acting normal. You, you're the one who who went and hid because the government told you to hide, and told you to be scared. Amazon has like doubled their. I mean, it's incredible how much more money they've made over this. But everybody was getting compliant, and they just jumped on the opportunities during the 1930s during that government influenced uh, financial disconnect. That, that's what we're going through right now. The, the financial turbulence that's going on right now is uh, being caused by the government money printing, the government shutdown, and Amazon is just roaring. And people are blaming and crying and screaming at them. And sure, the rules of, of the game have been changed in a way that it's easy for Amazon to benefit. But you don't have to shut down. You, you can find ways to for the rules of the game to, well, to benefit under the new rules of the game. Okay, Bitcoin. For individuals, I mean, we Bitcoin holders, uh, percentage-wise, we're doing better than Amazon. We're doing better than Jeff Bezos, okay? The people who, who've held Bitcoin this whole time. I mean, from, from the day things crashed on March 12th to now. I mean, it's amazing. But I, I do <laughs> I do find it uh, hilarious that uh, these people that hate on Amazon and are screaming for more lockdowns and more money printing are just making Amazon wealthier. And uh, long haulers, here's a, here's a quote about the long haulers who are hypochondriacs. And this really, this tweet really sums it out nicely. Just about every virus, including seasonal flu, leaves some people fighting long-term effects. This is not a new or unknown phenomenon. It's not, it's not. They're often, if you've got gotten, you know, strep throat, the flu, you might feel sick for a few months. I mean, it depends on your, uh, your system. I mean, that a lot of people can't, that can't handle it. it. Certain diseases. Okay, that's life. That's life. So, so people trying to scare you about long haulers. They never tried to scare you about long haul fluers, did they? No, of course not. Uh, because it, it sells. Fear sells. Panic prison industrial complex. I just came up with that. Now, uh, yeah, the biggest panic prison out guy out there is this guy, Dr. Eric Ding. He's one of them. I've seen some of his tweets retweeted by Alex uh, Berenson making fun of the dude because Alex Berenson is not a, is no panic prisoner. He's awesome. I still haven't listened to the Joe Rogan interview. I heard it was pretty good. Um, but this this Eric, Dr. Eric Ding, he, he loves to scare people so much. He had to bring up a story from March of a healthy, hot woman in San Francisco, who was a nurse, who was a marathon runner, who he, he said uh, she, she passed away from uh, the virus, but it was, uh, the, her obituary said from undetected heart failure. And guys, guess what? Before this virus happened, it, it happens. Young, hot people who are 29 years old look like they're in the best health possible. They're running a marathon. They, they run marathons. They have health, heart, heart problems. They didn't know it. And they die. It's very sad. It's called life. And it happens. But he uses it. They're so desperate, people like him. They, they, they know what they know what to do to scare people. You, you show someone in the peak of their freaking life and say, oh, look, they had the virus. And you should be scared. But this, this she didn't die from the virus. She, she, died, she had an unfortunate condition. It's, it's unfortunate. I mean, it's, I mean I, you could have it. I could have it. Anyone can have it. Anyone can drop dead in any second because of some unknown condition. They might have a brain problem. They have a heart problem. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. But uh, these sick people that love to keep people in the panic prison, that love their 15 minutes of fame or whatever, some of these uh, epidemiologists, these doctors, they're, they're getting so social media famous. They got to make this thing keep going and going and going. And this guy's one of them. Uh, and that's, to me, it's disgusting. And they need to be called out. 
BWI, that's Baltimore Washington International Airport, repo- reports most daily pe- passengers since mid March. And this was, I think, the day before Christmas or two days before Christmas. That's awesome, dudes. That's awesome. In motion. I'm glad more people are flying. The, the, the Fauci's of the world and the Brixes of the world and all these idiots in, in government um, told everyone, oh, it's the holidays, cancel your Christmas. And people didn't listen at all. People traveled uh, for the holidays. That's awesome. Um, you know, I, I, I said beforehand, I made it clear. I'm not, <laughs> don't blame me and, and people of my religion uh, for canceling your Christmas. Well, Christmas did not get canceled. Um, although I'm sure there were plenty of uh, liberals of my uh, of religion who were saying, oh, lock yourselves up, lock yourselves up. And, you know, when, when they do something like that, the conspiracy theorists out there say, oh, look, they're, they're trying to take away our Christmas, those evil, you know what? Uh, no, they're not doing that because of their religion. They're doing that because they're idiots. And uh, and they they're, uh, they follow the uh, talking points of CNN and all these ridiculous, uh, mindless, compliant organizations. Now, uh, nothing to do with religion. Now. Religious people are the ones that are the most defiant uh, during this whole situation. They're the ones that had done the religious gatherings when the, the state says you can't have more than 10 people in a church or synagogue. It's disgusting. And I, I, I've loved going to synagogue every week. And I have loved being on planes. And I love being in buses. And I love being outside. It's just so these are normal things, but most people are scared of these things these days. Well, not most, but OK. So who's the girl of the week in, in the picture of me? Oh, and social media was celebrating Anthony Fauci's 80th birthday. That's how disgusting and compliant people have. They worship this loser 80 year old who can't make up his mind. What, what 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 lie he should tell next? You know, oh, this is good for you. Oh, no, it's bad for you. Oh, this is herd immunity. Oh, this. No, it is. He, he can't. Even, this is why he's a government doctor. Everyone put the government doctor on a pedestal. He couldn't make it in the private, so he had to work. Government doctors are, are much worse than uh, private sector doctors. Of course, the, if, you, if you could get only get a job in the public sector, you're, I mean, think about it. Private sector is where the competition is. So who's the girl of the week? Um, she's a friend She's a friend of mine from the party days in Baltimore. You can see she had tattoos. And this is a typical thing of Baltimore women, uh, certain Baltimore women. Um, in, in my party scene, in the hipster scene, uh, she had one of Abraham Lincoln, one of Morrissey, one of an owl. And like she regretted them pretty soon afterwards. <laughs> Found that light button. Uh, and this, this <laughs> she's a nice person. And uh, she actually was a, pretty smart for someone that, that gets tattoos that you regret soon after getting them. I mean, these are big, big tattoos. The Abraham Lincoln one was like, uh, and, and you can see parts of them in that picture with me. She had a nice rack there. Obviously, I got to see the rack, got to. They felt they were nice. They were good. Um, so I, I made out with her a few times. I did not um, go all the way, um, but she was a, a friend too. She was a good, a good, she is a good person. She is a good person. She's married now. Um, but yeah, that's uh, some, she kind of resembles a classic Baltimore hipster. One thing different about her was um, she didn't do drugs or drink at all, at all. She was a, uh, her, her, she loves, I'm a straight edge. I'm a, that was her thing. I'm a straight edge. That was a thing at one point. There was like a, a group of hipsters that were the straight edges. They didn't do, and cool for them. That was good for them. The name was a little, whatever. They, they had to name themselves, but okay. Uh, but she loved to hang out at the places that I was out at, at the auto bar and um, just really good memories. When I think of her, she would call me in the middle of the night sometimes just after we'd all been out at two in the morning, she would have to tell me what happened at the post party and, uh, it, I, but when I when I posted the picture, right when I did the, the pre stuff before the show, I definitely got a big smile on my face thinking about the good times. And she was a she is a, she's a cool person and um, very good singing voice. Also, um, she did karaoke. She had a good singing voice, and uh, she she had blonde hair when I first met her, but her hair was really brown. Um, she became she was from the northeast suburbs, and I'm 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 originally from the northwest suburbs of Baltimore, so. They're a little bit different. The Northeast suburbs are no one of my religion is over there. So um, it's a little, it's a different section, different section of Baltimore, but it was good. I I like meeting different people from different parts of Baltimore. It it was a working, she's from a very working class uh, suburb, suburb Essex area up there. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, she, uh, you know, despite having a nice rack and, and very thin, she had a very interesting, herself, 
she didn't try to play games with guys. She actually was very serious with guys. Um, so I, I give her credit with that. She didn't try to use men. She didn't try. She tried to get down with with reality with guys. Um, even though she could have used guys and and had beta male orbiters. She didn't have beta male orbiters. She had um, she had gay friends that would uh, or, orbit around her and stuff. And she would she that was her her little male posse or or whatever. But um, yeah, she she was a, she was a good. A good person. All right, so that's her in the picture with me, and good good luck to her. There was a. Uh, she did try to. Uh, she tried to be a little contrary and a little too much on certain things. I, I will say that, but at least she had the mind to know what a contrarian was. Uh, but she, she is a person who would have done so well getting out of Baltimore. And she she did she did travel to a few places, but she could never leave Baltimore. She was a spender. That was that's another thing I wanted to point out. Like many women, she did spend, spend, spend. So she never saved, and that kept her trapped in in Baltimore. And yeah, Baltimore can be bad for people. Some people it, it can be a sick, horrible environment. Now she didn't get into the drugs, thank God. Um, but it's just she. I, I know she, she could have had a different. Uh, and she can still get out of there. I don't know. She is married now, so she's that was a goal of hers. So okay, so tongue scraper. Tongue scraper. I do the tongue scraper also. Just a health tip right there. I like to do that. Um uh, what else? Let me see if there hermaphrodite. Yes, that was the word I could not think of. When I, I, you, you've got both. Um you, you got you got both things. Uh uh. Uh, people that, that, that I, I, that's the one thing it just it's shot out it, 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 this is the one thing i see there i'm happy with that. <laughs> uh, don't uh oh here's something this is already linked to below i don't usually promote contests uh, where people give away bitcoin but this person asset dash a great website that i have quoted many times it lists all the assets of the world various companies and Bitcoin and what their market caps are and how Bitcoin is like the 11th most valuable asset in terms of market cap out there. So he, I'm going to read this real quick. We are giving away 0.01 Bitcoin to celebrate Bitcoin's rise up our leaderboard for a chance to win. Follow asset dash on Twitter, retweet, tag a friend or company in the comments that loves Bitcoin. Winner will be announced on New Year's. So there you go. I, I think this guy's got a great website. He's in motion and he's giving away uh, 0.01 Bitcoin. Um, I don't I don't usually talk about things like that, but the dude's in motion. So good for him. Uh, oh, yeah. So today was my sprint day and I, it was really a glorious sprint day. Uh, maybe because I had a real I mean, I fast Friday I didn't eat at all. Saturday, I had a great meal. And maybe that, that that great meal just really fueled me well today. I mean, I felt one of my best sprint days ever. And so afterwards, I go running, okay? And I'm running in the a supermarket uh, in a supermarket uh, the parking lot, and uh, the dumpsters there. And I lean in, and there's some onions. So I get some onions. I need some onions for the rest of the day. I'm leaving here on January 5th, and so I decide, oh, look, there's enough onions in there. I can uh, I'll have enough onions for the rest of the trip. Why not? I won't need it. So with the recent spike of Bitcoin price, of the Bitcoin price, okay, I thought about this. I started to wonder, am I the wealthiest person on the planet Earth that eats out of dumpsters? I mean, it's a legitimate question now. It's, it's becoming a legitimate, it's a legitimate question. With, because who, who the, you, know, you think of the people who dumpster dive, kids and, and poor people, and, and, and you know, some people are trying to save money and smart people. Um, but once you, but the Bitcoin price has gone up quite a bit. So you, you can, and, you know, mo, mo, I mean, my wealth is a Bitcoin, I value my wealth in Bitcoin. So at this point, um, am I the wealthiest person on earth that eats out of a dumpster sometimes? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a good, it's an interesting question. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm sure there are other dudes that have a substantial amount of money that, that, that occasionally do it and whatever. That when they're running, they're like, oh, yeah, some onions. I'll, you know, or, you know, I find an apple in those. You know, I, I've told you all sorts of stories, the oranges I find. But it is coming to a point now where I'm starting to wonder, like, yeah. <laughs> it's an inter interesting question. All right. And, uh, oh, Yaron broke the free market of vaccine. Oh, my God, I can't believe I saved this till uh, this point. 
Oh God, I thought we were at the end of the show. We're not there yet. Uh, yeah, so vaccines right now, the way governments have it set up, the vaccine makers could only sell vaccines to governments by law. Imagine if these vaccine makers could sell to anyone. Like you could, a vaccine maker would make a vaccine. And if you thought you needed a vaccine, you would just buy it from the vaccine maker. Okay. Or maybe the, the supermarket would buy it from the vaccine maker. You buy it from the supermarket. Um, so we would truly know the demand for these vaccines if, if that was the case, if it was a free market situation. But right now, the, the vaccine makers probably like this a lot because the governments buy way too much um, and, and bid way too much. Now, if it was free market, the way it would work is that the people who wanted it the most would immediately start bidding it up. And yes, it would be wealthy people that would pay too much for the vaccine at first until they were able to produce as much as the market really demanded. The price would go down at that point. But I have a I have a, I have a, I have a theory that uh, they, they want to do too well eventually. That a lot of people will be like, no, I don't want this thing. Uh, because the whole the government's buying it. Then they make these rules around it. Well, you have to get it and uh, making it semi-required, sort of required, make it some probably will make it required. So it's a whole twisting of of the of the it's it's using government to totally mess up the market. The free market would be freaking awesome for this. I would. I have no problem. I have no problem. Once this thing happened, once we knew there was something out there, if uh, people started making vaccines and you could buy it if you want to, and you would say, you you would say, hey, I'm, I can't sue you if I die from this. I think that's totally fair. If you want to take a vaccine, pay for, it, pay whatever you want to for it. Don't have the government tell you how much it's how much it is, or the government to give it away for free and pay way too much for it. And government paying way too much of it is us taxpayers paying for it anyway, paying for something we don't want, just like paying for public school, another thing that we don't, most of us don't, or lots of us don't want. Uh, so making it even semi-mandatory or mandatory, um, and there is a uh, it's 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 rent seeking, okay? It it uh, well. The, the, the organizations like Bill Gates, Bill Gates appears to be a rent seeker here. He's like, yeah, vaccines are awesome. Vaccines are awesome. They maybe should be mandatory. And, oh, I own, uh, I'm invested in companies that are developing vaccines. Now, I think it's totally fine that Bill Gates, if he wants to invest in companies that are making vaccines, that's cool. But if he's begging the government, hey, make this mandatory, force people to take this thing, or scare people into it, that is rent-seeking right there. That is creating a situation where you're not adding any value at all. You're forcing uh, people to buy your product through the means of the government, okay? So th there, there is rent-seeking involved in this whole vaccination uh, shebang here by, by various people that are invested in, in, in it. Uh, and, I mean, again, it, it's just like, uh, yeah, yeah. Government, I, I'm go, I'm going to buy. I'm going to build a bridge for you, um, but you got to force everybody to travel on this bridge and pay a toll. Okay, I mean, this is classic classic rent seeking, and uh, again, for not if you don't involve the government at all and making the government make rules that force people to use your product, that is awesome. But when you start getting the government involved to change the rules of the game so people are forced onto your bridge, forced onto your vaccine, disgusting rent seeking. So, yeah, 20, the 23rd was the busiest travel day since uh, this all started, since all this uh, fear mongering started. So congratulations to the people of the United States of America. You were traveling um, before uh, the 25th on, on the 23rd and 24th. Uh, what is this? Uh, Tone Vase had a tweet when he was in at California praising the places that were open, that were going against the uh, Governor, Governor Newsom's order, orders. And he showed him, he, he went out of his way to go to places that were open, putting his money where his mouth is. Tone Vase, you rock. You rock. You've been a voice of optimism and defiance in this uh, Bitcoin space where there have been quite a few Bitcoiners who have disappointed during, and have uh, 
gone and cried and screamed to the government. And uh, if you're wondering who some of them are, I mean, I, I don't let these, uh, once I start figuring out who was being compliant to the United, to the government, who was scared, you, the, 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 the roster for the uh, This Week in Bitcoin show has, uh, has changed. Um, you, you will, some of you that are uh, paid close attention have noticed since uh, about March, some people have not returned to my show. And uh, perhaps you should follow their Twitter feeds and you probably uh, understand real fast uh, why, why they haven't been on the show because they, they believe in all this nonsense and stuff. And I'm not, I'm not dealing with that kind of thing, man. I think it's, uh, I think it's ridiculous. Um, but yes, yeah, I mean, I, hey, they can preach whatever they want to. I don't have to associate with people that are in a freaking panic prison and or big and are bitcoiners that's great that they're bitcoiners but i the, the whole panic prison thing i'm not down with that and uh yeah i mean <laughs> now i'm not going to name any names there that, that, that's not right that there was an in there, there was an interview i did with someone at the beginning of this uh this whole debacle and during the interview i started figuring out that he was in the panic prison and he hasn't been on my show since and uh, despite requests for people to have him on my show, uh, but I think during the show you can see it in my face, like I'm shocked that this dude is saying some of these things, these pro-government things, just wanting the doom so much that he that he he's willing to like have the duck government produce this doom situation. You see, that, that that's kind of a sad thing too. That some people like love doom so much that they like that the government is like scaring everybody. So oh, this is the whole doom end of the world scenario I've always dreamed of. Now I'm going to be a compliant bootlicker because they've they've created this situation. You know, it's it's all in your head, dudes. The real the the productive world is carrying on. I mean, there are plenty of people that are stuck in the doom hole that have just been had a terrible 2020 and will have continue to have a terrible 2021. You got to be in motion. Hey, there are people that were shaming Kirk Cameron for caroling in Los Angeles. He was leading all these people to sing Christmas carols outside. Dude, I was I retweeted that thing. I said I'm Jewish and I support those dudes doing their Christmas carols, and they should still do them. <laughs> Maybe I know it's over. Well, don't you guys have the twelve days of Christmas so you can like keep on singing? Uh, and uh, God, you know something I love when I'm running in March and I see people. <laughs> they got these brown freaking Christmas trees out there with their <laughs> with their garbage. They've kept them so darn long. <laughs> I see it every year. <laughs> All right, so uh, Apple unveils a high-end AirPods Max, and the price tag is raising eyebrows. $539 for earphones. And people wonder why the poor stay poor. <laughs> Dude, uh, if, if you're spending $530 on, on earphones, earphones! And, I mean, the, and this is why the, the rich get richer, man. The rich are buying Bitcoin, okay, with their five hundred thirty-nine dollars. <laughs> you know, when I found out, I found out about this story two weeks ago, okay. So if you would have before Bitcoin was twenty thousand dollars, I found out about the story. It just took me a while to bring it up. So I mean, five thirty-nine on Bitcoin, then you'd already be doing awesome. And and once you buy those earphones, they're worthless. I mean, they're it's five hundred thirty. They have no value. They're not an asset at all. But 80 percenters don't get what an asset is. They don't get what money printing is. And you run Brooke thinks they're going to understand ideas. Good luck. Good luck. I mean, I, I embrace people who are down with ideas, down with thinking. I love it. I love it. But um, what I've experienced uh, in life and how blindly people follow these algorithms and these pretty people on TV, uh, I know that most people are just mindless. And I love – People who use their brains and people who use their brains and are successful should be proud, should be proud of their success, should be proud of their wealth and shouldn't feel bad for it for one second because all those suckers couldn't use their brains and are living off of welfare. You shouldn't feel bad for them at all, at all. You should try to even do better. Uh, and so you, you are further away from those people, okay? But yes, they want to bring you down because they believe in this uh, income inequality and wealth, wealth in inequality. Wealth inequality is a joke. It is nothing. Why should you care that Bill Gates makes so much money or uh, at Jeff Bezos makes so much money? You should care about yourself. You're so worried about other people that you don't make anything for yourself. I've gone over that many times. So Giant, I'll leave with a Giant Bandari tweet. Now, that's a dude. That's a unique beast who is not scared of speaking his mind. Now, he's no Bitcoiner, 
Okay. But that dude, he is not, he has never been politically correct at all. He is like, the, he is what Doug Casey should have been. Okay. Um, Anyway, he says, show me someone who always sympathizes with, with, sympathizes with poor people, the underclass, and the weak, and I will show you someone who is intellectually timid. Of course, most of the harm anyone faces will come from the rich and successful, but that by definition is true. So, yeah, he, he brings up a good point. You know, you can – if you're rich and successful, you are able to cause more harm than someone who's poor and can't do a darn thing. All right. So, yeah, most of the harm anyone faces will come from not so nice, rich and successful people. But I mean, don't be stuck in poor mode. OK, so and uh, a comment added under there, also not by Jayant, but by someone else. Also, clarification for people who don't know how to think logically. Most of the harm anyone faces will come from the rich and successful does not mean that the rich and successful people are the cause of all problems. Very good. Very good point there. Or that all rich and successful people are evil. Okay. So let me see if there are any other uh, topics here. I finally got rid of some of these old ones I've had sitting around. All right, dudes. Love you too. Sky is the limit. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Remember, subscribe to the channel, pound that like button, bang that bell button. We'll be back with the uh, regular One Bitcoin show tomorrow. I hope you own One Bitcoin. I've been preaching it for so long. Um, one Bitcoin is right now worth $26,928. I've been telling you to buy it since freaking 200 All right, see you, dudes. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you.